So you check into a hotel room, and it's a pretty high-profile hotel. We're talking about about the Taj Hotel here in Lucknow. Uh, and, and what happens? You you order room service, housekeeping, and they deliver a snake. Like, tell me, how did you end up with a snake in your room? I'd been at breakfast in the morning. And I just came back to my room and I needed to get my laundry out. So uh, I've walked into the room, put the laundry out. As I've put my laundry out, at the corner of my door on the inside of my uh, room was this, it looked translucent, like it looked like a bit of a, a worm. And it must have been the underside of it at first. And I sort of thought, yeah, it was definitely a worm. At and I was about to pick it up and sort of shift it. And I thought, no, 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 they've got little uh, laundry, please collect uh, slips, which I used to flick it out um, of the room. And as I've flicked it out, it's turned over and you can see the back and it looked like a snake um, to me. So I had a bit of a closer look and I tried to use the laundry slip to to move it and, and see it a little bit more. And it started to do the, the snake wow. like, yeah. So um, I ended up getting uh, one of the room attendants that was just around the corner to come and have a look and then he was like panicking he goes oh snake snake <laughs> and everyone started to come around a couple of uh, teammates came around and had a look as well and they were panicking and we all were sort of having a bit of a laugh but uh yeah they got a pest pest guy to come in pest control guy i think and um yeah remove remove the snake so yeah, i still don't know what type of snake it was actually um i, I keep hearing a couple of different different things i put it on instagram obviously and now, a few comments that came up there were there was a wolf snake, which is non-venomous, oh. and then it was a uh, like I don't know if it's crate or cra uh, Kate snake K A I T or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, apparently which is very toxic and venomous, and then I've heard baby cobra, um, <laughs> and then I heard another one was a, a Russell viper. So I've heard oh, a few different a few a few different names, but um, all I know is that. Um, yeah, they shifted me out of my room straight away, checked all my bags and got me into another room. But uh, yeah, that first night sleeping afterwards was, uh, yeah, I checked my bed. I checked, checked the floor. I was checking the toilet, <laughs> checked everywhere <laughs> to make sure that there was no, no little uh, snakes slithering around. And while all this was happening, this like while your teammates came over and, and the snake is still there. I mean, the same position there, the, like in the picture you posted. Yeah, pretty much. It, it it moved around a little bit and then it stopped when more people came around. I think maybe it was just a bit fearful. Um, yeah, like I said, as I got a little bit closer, it started to defend itself a little bit. But um, yeah, then I started to like worry that maybe I stood on it when I walked in oh. the door originally and didn't see it and I had thongs on. And I thought, oh. oh, maybe I've been bitten here. And I started to like go, oh, I don't feel too good here. Maybe I have been bitten the heart race, the heart started to uh, race a little bit, but then, um, yeah, I calmed down a bit and was like, ah, it's all good. Today, I wanted to speak to you about, uh, you know, uh, this is two years ago, uh, an interesting topic, which um, I'm, I'm myself, you know, I consider myself to be the first listener of this podcast, right? You know, it's the Mitch Johnson show, it's your story. Uh, and, and I've been intrigued by it. I've always wanted to talk to you about... Uh, uh, this particular experience of yours, uh, you were on a show called SAS Australia. And I was doing some research. It used to be called SAS Australia, Who Dares Wins. And this is not the Who Dares Wins that Mike Whitney famously hosted. And yeah. um, it was it used to be a big hit in India as well. I think Mike Whitney became a big reality yeah, star. Yeah. Even. Um, but That's this, what people this... thought it was, I think, when it first came out. But it's out of the UK originally. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and look, it's got this terrifyingly ominous slogan uh you know uh, and you were if i'm not mistaken we'll get to it you were in the first season or the celebrity season anyway it says what doesn't kill you makes you uh and if i heard that i would never even go anywhere close to <laughs> <laughs> that show uh, but what what is sas australia like you know for our international audiences uh, or listeners uh can yeah. you just break it down yeah so the the show came out of the uk uh sas who dares wins i think uh, it was called over there as well. So I actually used to watch it 
And when I was approached to do it, I was like, sort of first initial thought was like, yes. And then I was like, oh, hang on, think about it. Like, think about some of the stuff these people have gone through. Um, but so it's based around, basically based around SAS selection. It's oh. like a, I wouldn't say a softer version, but it's like a, a version made for TV uh, and they get celebrities, but they also get yeah, um, people off the streets to, to have a crack at it as well. Um, so there's been a few episodes in, in the UK and, and they tried it out in Australia. And yeah, I was the first one, uh, one of the first ones in, in the celebrity series. So uh, yeah, it was it was something that um, I'd seen before, knew what it was about. It's about testing your your physical, but it was more about the mental side. Um, but yeah, based around SAS selection. And I've always had an interest in, in the Army and the SAS. And I remember watching a program on uh, the SAS, uh, I can't remember the name of it exactly, something about Warrior, um, and it was on SBS, I think it was. So um, I remember watching, that was the real, based around the real course, so they'd show clips oh. of um, what they were going through over two weeks, and so I've always had that that bit of an interest. Um, my, my mate um, is at the, the Mill Gym in, in Perth, and he's XAS, ex-commando, um, so I spoke to him about it and just, we just both, I just thought it was like a great opportunity to do something, take me out of my comfort zone, see what I was capable of. Uh, and so he gave me a program to, to work on. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. So I, um, was training twice a day, three days on one day off, um, for about three months. They wanted to shoot it in New Zealand. So we'd gone over to New Zealand to shoot but it was around the COVID period and every day went by and it was getting worse and worse with COVID. So they ended up cancelling or postponing the show, sorry. And we all went back home to Australia. And then I think a few weeks later, they said it's it's back on and we're going to be in Australia and we're going to shoot it. So yeah, training was quite, quite intense. Uh, I got a bit more training in and yeah, got as fit as I could, tried to be mentally strong um, and yeah, it was it was really about testing myself and and taking, uh, I guess, calculated risks in some ways. Did you look at it as a as a reality TV show? Is it a reality TV show? I mean, it is, I guess. In well, a way, yeah. But... I, I, I I'd sort of thought about. I spoke to Jess about it, and she was like, "Yeah, go for it. Like, this is this is something that you want to do." And um, I'd always, like I said, had that interest in that side of things, um, and the special forces and all those all those kind of things. So. Um, yeah, I, I was doing it more for experience. It wasn't for, I wasn't doing it for fame. I wasn't doing it for money. Definitely didn't, you know, do it for money. Um, mm. and it was more just for my own experience and to see what I was able to sort of achieve. And I had the expectations in my own head where I wanted to go. I wanted to get through and, and, and finish. But the biggest issue I had with it was that there was no, there was no real end game to it. Like, for me, I have to have an end sort of game. Yeah. I have to have something to, to work towards. And because it was a TV, a reality TV show, um, there was no, you know, you go off, then you're selected for the SAS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I That's had to cool. try and trick my mind into thinking that. Like, it was really weird. Um, but, yeah, it was, um, yeah, the whole, whole ex, um, you know, sort of lead up the, ex, the um, just wanted to experience the, uh, what some of those guys and, and, and girls go through. I know there's a lot of a lot of women that um, do try out for the SAS now. So it was, um, yeah, really, really sort of challenging um, at times. There was certain things that I struggled with and there's certain things that I was good at, but that's part of it. And, and speaking to my mate about, about it, they never got any sort of feedback as they were on the course, mm. uh, which was probably, which is probably harder. Um, Whereas, um, yeah, we, we definitely got feedback and, and things like that when we were on the course. So you approached them, like, how did the whole approach happen? Like, did you, uh, did one of the producers get in touch with you or did you have to nominate yourself? Yeah, I got an approach from the, uh, what do you call it? Um, like a talent agency mm -hmm. that worked with the network and yeah, sat down, uh, with, with a lady called Kirsty. And she, she works for that company, um, that, that gets all the talent. So yeah, sat down with her and had a good chat and, and sort of laid it all out. And, um, yeah, I was like, 
sort of, yep, I'll do it. Um, so yeah, I went there and gave it my best. And I think like, like I, like I was trying, I think I was trying to say this before, but I was got myself all prepared for it. And then the expectation was to, to get to the end. But mm. I think when I look at it now and what I achieved and it was more powerful uh, and something that I needed to, to get out there was talking about depression. I didn't mention ADHD or anything like that in that uh, interview that I did. You sort of go into a mirror room and they, they grill you. Yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't, didn't mention that, but yeah, it's sort of, I, I look at it now and go, well, I was at that point at that point in my life. That was something that I needed to, to talk about and get off my chest. And it was something that I actually was thinking to myself before going in. And I think Jess was a little worried about it as well. Um, just the frame of mind that I was in. I think going into the into the show, I, I was a little a little bit con- concerned. I didn't want to talk about uh, any of my troubles that I was having with depression. I didn't think it was the right platform. And I actually said that to um, one of the uh, the guys on the show, one of the SAS guys on the show after afterwards I'd, I'd spoken to a couple of them um, through private messages and stuff. So I said I didn't feel like it was the right time to be talking about it, but they were like, well, it was the, the perfect timing was that time because it was right for you. So, um, and, and I guess like you sort of worry about what the, the, the talk is going to be about it because I think I never wanted to make that as an excuse for anything. It was always like, I always felt like I had that even through my cricket career, I had that depression and I never wanted to make it as an excuse. It was, it was, I just knew it was always there, but, um, yeah, so I think that the opportunity of doing that uh, show was, yeah, but it it was my journey and and I got what I needed to get out of it. Were you aware of what it would be like or like how tough it would be, especially that side of it where not so much the challenges, but of like the challenge of talking about it on camera. Uh, about talking, yeah, like I said, I, I, I my intentions going in were never to talk about, it and I, I was. The one thing that they the the SAS guys talk about is is about breaking you down mm. and then building you back up. So I was at that point of being broken down already when I before going in, and I actually remember the the, the, the day that we that I pulled out of the course. We'd gone up to Mount Kosciuszko, and it's about an hour and a half drive in the back of these little little trucks. And freezing cold, and they'll get, they were about to chuck us in some ice and ice cold water and make us do this this challenge. And we got up there, and there was a blizzard. And I remember coming down for the hour and a half drive back, and there was a lot of like negative talk, like what are we going to do? What are they going to smash us? They, you know, people like trying to talk themselves down. And then you start to get into your own head, and I was just thinking, uh, I had my busted up hands. I had like. Um, uh, a lot of scratches on my hands and they got infected um, for like probably two days. And I just remember thinking, I'm, I'm going to break here. Like I'm just, I don't need to be here. Mm. So we did the challenge and it was just a, a physical challenge, which, yeah, there was the mental side to it as well. It was just to keep going. But yeah, I'd already made my decision in my head that I didn't, didn't want to be there. And, um, but then it just, yeah, it sort of, it, me talking about the depression and just it, it really just came out of me and um it was pretty natural when it came out like it was just just me just talking i didn't even you don't even remember like you don't even think about cameras being there or that you're on on a tv show or or anything like that i was just there talking to two guys and they were you know pretty sympathetic at the same time um they've obviously gone through their own issues i've read all their books before mm. going in and, and they've had their struggles um, as well, so they had that understanding, and I guess me being at that point of my life as well, being out of out of cricket um, only in recent times, um, it yeah, it, it's it's you know it was pretty raw at the time, and I'm really happy that I was able to talk about it on that platform um, because I think the sort of the feedback that I got from it was was quite outstanding, uh, not outstanding, astonishing, should I say? It wasn't what I expected. I thought there would be more negativity towards me uh, for some reason. Uh, but there was a lot of people, women and men, uh, that just said how it was just amazing that someone in my position, my profile, was able to 
talk so openly about depression. Uh, and I guess I, at the time I just didn't understand how powerful that was. Um, but by getting all those messages, and which I'm really thankful for as well, uh, just that support. But yeah, I had people come up to me and sort of, you know, they were saying thank you very much for giving them the courage to be able to open up to talk about their own issues that they have and and things like that. So yeah, that's how powerful it was. I I'll just read some of the things that uh, you know you said when when you were just about to uh, leave that show. Uh, you spoke about, I mean, this is to quote you, I found out I've got depression, but I think the depression was something I've had even from a younger age. Cricket sort yeah. of blocked things out in a way. It sort of hit the depression, but there was a lot of times where, you know, you go back to your room, you're away from family and you start to dwell on things. I'm taking it upon myself to be active with certain things to keep my mind going. I struggle with probably confidence at times and just think I am in the transition now where I've been out of cricket now for about uh, two years. This is this is all really personal stuff to be, you know, talking about. You speak about you how you weren't enjoying being a professional cricketer, about, you know, being looked at and judged and you how you took everything yeah. personally. This, this, this is all coming out, you know, like I said, on a public forum where, you know, it's out there. Everybody can watch it. Yeah, yeah. Um... I guess it was just all I cared about was just being open and honest, and I felt like I needed to to say all those things. Um, it came to a time, like, it came to the point of me just needing to do that, um, and then uh, you know getting help myself. So I think that was sort of the first step for me was to recognise and, and and sort of be honest with myself that yeah I, I've got some problems and I need help. So. Um, yeah, I'm not ashamed of, of it, um, especially now. Like I'm very open and talking about it and mm -hmm. I do talk about, I think what it's done is like it's, even with my mates, I, I can talk about it and, you know, mm -hmm. they've had some issues themselves and, and we're very open. It's it's not, not the same as I guess when I grew up, you, you don't talk about those things. Um, you're, you're not encouraged to anyway. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like, um, yeah, it was... It's definitely at the time it was hard hard to do it, but also a massive relief when I did do it, and um, it just happens like I said, just happened to be on that show in in front of um, a lot of people. So um, yeah, I think I hope for me from my point of view, it's it's about still helping myself, but I just hope that other people out there that do struggle with whatever it may be, um, we've all we've all but just been through a pretty tough time with COVID. Uh, or extremely tough time with COVID and places like Melbourne being locked down and, and the, the cases of mental the mental health um, struggles there now are, are going to go through the roof, I think, in time as well. Um, but I think, yeah, it's just hopefully people are able to have the courage or just, I don't know, maybe I have the understanding, not necessarily the courage, but just the understanding that they're able to freely talk about this kind of stuff and um, because it definitely makes a difference and, um, yeah, it, it does make you feel, feel a lot better, um, at the time, and, and, but you do need to go and, and seek that, um, professional help as well. I feel, um, just to, to really, um, get you through and get, get things in place to, uh, to combat those days when you are struggling. And, and I saw the, the, the clip of, uh, you talking, it starts with, uh, uh that is Jess on the line, right? You speak to her yeah. and you, and, and this is all happening on camera and, and you break down, you know, you're, you, yeah. you are in tears while you speak to her and, uh, you know, you talk about how challenging it's been. Uh, that would have been a, another challenge in itself, not maybe in the moment, because you, like you said, you weren't even, you weren't even thinking about the cameras in the room and all that, but maybe looking back at it just to, you know, break down and like, you know, in front of the cameras with everyone watching. Um, again, like you don't even notice the, the cameras were like hidden, no, not hidden cameras, but there were cameras in the, in the room, but it was, um, yeah, I, I, I guess being in the profession of, of playing, playing cricket and being in the public eye, you always felt like you were being watched and that you always had to act a certain way and you weren't allowed to do this. You weren't allowed to do that. You, you always told those things. And I think. In that situation, I just wanted to just be me 
Um, it's it's quite funny. I've always been, um, you know, I've been, I guess that perception of me, you see me on the field, I'm that aggro, aggressive, fast bowler. Um, but that's not me. Like I'm, I'm not an angry person in general. Like I, I try to, um, I, I like to think of myself as, as just a, a, a big softy. Um, and I think I was just, yeah, sort of just playing that, that role, um, as a cricketer, as a fast bowler. So yeah, I think once I sort of let go of that and, you know, being outside of the game and then being in that situation where Jess was on the phone, just being able to hear her voice. And I guess I think it's been her support as well. That's, um, made me feel so emotional, um, at the time. And, and, you know, I wasn't on the show for that long. I think it was four days, um, but it was four days was long enough, um, for me to break down in that situation. So, um, yeah, no, I, I look back at that and I still, there's, um, there's nothing wrong with, with, you know, those kind of things. And I think we should, um, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I, I was in that moment and that's what my emotions were and that's how I felt. And yeah. The, the SAS guys, I know Aunt, Aunt Middleton came in afterwards and was like, gave me a, you know, a big embrace and big hug. Um, and I think, yeah, it just has that understanding. Um, and, and that's sort of part of what they're going through. Like they break you down and, and try and build you back up. And like that, like, like for me now, I am building myself back up. And uh, building yourself back up uh, from just, uh, I'm not saying from having, you know, sh let your emotions out on the show, but just having kind of, got in touch with with your real self like was that also the first time you you kind of got to you know experience the real mitchell johnson for your own self uh yeah i guess so yeah yeah it sort of brought me back to you know certain times in my life um yeah and, and that vulnerability i think feeling vulnerable um and it's okay to feel like that so um yeah i just had more of an understanding of that and my emotions and um, that, you know, you don't have to hide your emotions. I know as a, like, again, again, going into the profile of, of being in the public eye, you, you are watched all the time and you feel like you have to act a certain way and behave and, um, be that strong, strong person. Um, but it's not always the case. So, um, I think the more we can be ourselves, the, the better. Um, yeah, there's still a lot of people out there that are quite judgmental, I'm sure, but, um, in the end, they don't really matter. So um, you just, yeah, you know, you just surround yourself with good people and get the help that you need and um, and just live live a, a, a happy life. And I can, I can, that's the plan now is to, to keep building on that, keep um, rebuilding myself and um, yeah, enjoying, enjoying the, you know, the life that I have ahead of me. Not saying that it's, it's, it's still a daily battle. Like I'm still, you know, fighting through things. Um, but you know, I just, you just have to wake up each morning and, and try and put that positive spin on things and try and get through. And yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's still a daily battle at times, but yeah. What do you think you're, uh, are you dealing with it better? I'm not dealing with it better, but you more, um, in touch with that side of you where it's okay for you to feel that way. Yeah. I'm starting to understand that a lot more now that it's okay to, 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 to feel that. And it's, I think um, I definitely had the battles early on with it, like thinking, oh, no, I just got to harden up a bit and just got to get on with it. And sometimes you just, you don't feel like it. Like there'll be days where I've, I've just don't want to move. I just can't move out of bed. Like lit physically, I feel like I can't do anything. Um, so yeah, there's all those, those struggles, but yeah, I'm definitely starting to, well, I've had, I've got more of an understanding of it now and, uh, it's like I said, you, when you have that help and, and you're getting things to work on and how to deal with it, it definitely helps a lot more. I actually, I, I actually was, so I, I sort of didn't mention, but before the show, I, I had been on antidepressants and I had, uh, the Dexies as well for my ADHD mm. and I got off them for the show because I wanted to be me. That was the reason I got off the antidepressants. So I was about three months off them. Or four months off them, I think. 
uh, or it might have been a little bit longer because we redid the show, show, show. So it might have been even six months that I was off the antidepressants and the uh, the Dexys. So um, I started to be a lot more in my head uh, once I was off that stuff and uh, just, you know, the negative stuff was coming in and uh, the feelings that I used to get. Um, so, yeah, going to that show was... I was definitely myself and I'm glad that I did get off them because I think that definitely helped me uh, talk about it and be more open. Um, but yeah, I'm currently well, after that show, after the show, I went back on, on, on the antidepressants, but what I found with the antidepressants was, uh, I felt very dull, very sort of flat line, no sort of emotion. I was very just, yeah, dull and plain and yeah not really interesting, I guess, as the way I put it. Um, yeah, I wasn't happy about anything. I wasn't sad about anything. It was just very, very middle and it didn't feel, feel right. Um, I wanted to feel emotion, but I just, yeah, need to be a bit more sort of even keel, I guess. Um, but not flat line. So, uh, I've been off antidepressants now, um, for almost, I think it's been two years almost, um, and just working on different methods, uh, looking into different ways to, to deal with it. Um, I'm looking into currently like looking into a bit of the meditation stuff and, and breath work stuff um, and a few more sort of natural things as well. But I, I was shocked when I actually read about you, you know, stopping your medication what, a few months before getting on the show. Is is that an okay thing to do, or was that an okay thing to do? Uh, well, did you I, consult I spoke, your therapist? Yeah, I spoke to this, um, my uh, therapist and said it was fine. Like, see how you go and see how you're feeling. And um, and at the time, I felt okay. But yeah, as as sort of time went on, after about three months, I could definitely notice I was going back into the old niche, I guess. Um, but I wanted to be that way as well. I was happier to be that way, which sounds really strange to be happier that way. But um, I just felt like for what I wanted to achieve, I, uh, this is, I guess, my thinking behind it was, well, I played my whole cricket career with no medication. So I was able to, you know, get through that, um, you know, I was able to have a focus on something. That's what I thought would happen on the show as well. I was, I'd be able to focus on certain tasks and that would get me through. But um, yeah, it's sort of, I would say unfortunately, but I think it's fortunate that I was able to come out of the course when I did and, and talk about depression. Was it almost like, uh, like you said, you never had to depend on uh, medication of any sort when you were mm. playing. Uh, and in a way, it worked out really well for you, right? I mean, your cricket career, when you look at it overall. So yeah. because you're getting into a show where you had to, you know, endure these physical and psychological challenges, uh, did the that side of Mitchell Johnson wake up and say, you know what, like, I'm better off without it because I played my cricket without it? Uh, well, that's what, yeah, exactly at the start of the show, before it started, that's what I felt like, that I, I could get through it. Um but it is a, the psychological side was the was the toughest part because um, yeah you physically have to be fit um, for the show and for the, if you're going to do the course you, you obviously have to have fitness there um, the guys they carry you know some pretty heavy packs and they you know um, physically need that that strength but it's the psychological side of it which was the the big thing um, I'd say it was the majority of it. To be honest, there was a section of the course where we all got blind. We had to get blindfolded and we go through like a, a, a course and you have to shoot at the end. At the, You have to make a decision whether it's enemy or, or friendly. And I remember having the bl uh, blindfold on, getting thrown into a tunnel and told that it was a really tight tunnel and to get through fast. And I got halfway through and I, I thought it was a tight tunnel because that's what they said. And... I'm like this going through this tunnel and I got halfway through and started to panic because I found out that I wasn't enjoying tight spaces. Um, so I had to, I did a bit of box breathing. So box breathing, I think it's like you count of four, you go in four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four to like calm myself down. And then you come out and then um, 
I find out later that the, the tunnel was quite big. You could actually stand up in it. But oh. because they had said it, that it was tight, um, it's a really like tight tunnel that it just, the psychological games. And so I just believed what they said. And so my mind was, um, you know, tricked into thinking it was a, a tight space. But, um, and I, even out after that section, we you get out of the tunnel. And this is how I look back at this on um, when I watched the show and they throw a cup of water in your face. They open your blindfold up and throw yeah. a cup of water in your face. And I thought I was still on the ground, but I'm standing up on the show. So I was actually rattled by going through that tunnel. So psychologically, it, it got me. And I didn't actually want to go through that experience again, to be honest. I didn't want to go in a tight space. I think that fear of being claustrophobic uh, was real for me. So that definitely had an impact on me. Has it had like uh, an impact on you, like, you know, moving forward? Like about like, you know, maybe traveling in, an, in a lift or any of that sort? Nah, it's like, I'm, I'm okay with all that stuff. Um, I've, I used to have a little bit of a fear of like heights and where I used to, I used to cross a bridge in Townsville to go to school and it was quite high, but so I overcome that fear. And then the tight spaces, like I think just as I've gotten bigger and older, I almost feel like, well, what's the point of putting myself through something like that? Um, I don't feel like there's any point to face that, that fear, but I don't know, who knows, maybe I will do something to overcome that at some point. Maybe it's something I need to do. I guess it's one of those challenges like, so I'm doing this uh, this charity boxing match. It's a yeah. it's a fear of um, fighting. I, I don't like confrontation, so I'm doing it for that for, for for that reason as well as for the charity. Um, but yeah, I think I do these things to to challenge myself and and maybe um, yeah, I'm gonna have to maybe put myself in a in a box somewhere and <laughs> close <laughs> it up and and stay in it and to overcome the fear. I don't know. I don't think you need to do that. Honestly, <laughs> I, I think I think you're fine. I think you're fine till the time you're okay and traveling in close places. Yeah, uh, I think I think you're fine. You've done enough to challenge yourself in that sense, anyway. Uh, we'll see. Well, who knows? Like I said, my mate here, he's at the Mill Gym. They do a lot of uh, right. courses there still. So he said, anytime you want to do something, just let me know. We'll <laughs> we'll get it done. I was like, yep, cool. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't there um, something about uh, like I was reading. Uh, towards the end of that show, was it on the same day as the tunnel where you said you had to pick whether you were shooting at an enemy or or, yeah. a, or a friend and you couldn't pull the trigger or, you know, and then you kind of panic? What, what was that about? Uh, I didn't panic. I just, I didn't, um, I couldn't get the safety off without looking down. So I wanted to, I mean, I've shot rifles before and I'd been shooting out with my mate um, previously before that just to get a bit of stuff in, uh, a bit of rounds in. Um so I've I've done done that before and the safety it just wasn't in the right spot on my finger so I couldn't flick it and then I had to look down and flick it off so I wasn't panicking it was um I think it was just the yeah I couldn't get the right right so I was pressing the wrong um trying to press oh. the wrong button so it looks like I'm panicking but I was like I was more pissed off at myself that I couldn't um flick it off because we had we had like a a, tr a dry run earlier that day I think it was, and I was able to flick it off without looking down um, because I'd done it before. And yeah, I don't know. May maybe it was just a little bit like I felt like I was rushed, maybe. But yeah, I just couldn't get it down. So is what it is. Um, it it's all part of the experience. I don't. I look back and and sort of see it, and and you go. I, I totally understand the whole like concept of what the show is about, and that part was like you've got to make split decisions and you've got to, uh, you know, I'm not a trained, I'm not a trained, um, I'm not trained in in, um, in the army. I'm not trained, at, I don't shoot the, a rifle every day. Um, that's not my job. So, um, and I, I don't know that they, the, the SAS guys there, they understand all that. It's just, it's just part of us experiencing what they, you know, just a small portion of what they go through in their um, selection course. Was there a challenge uh, where another thing I did read was you had to carry a log as a team across, yep. uh, across a, what, what was it like across a puddle or like you know to the oh, other end? I went end through and... puddles. We went under, um, went through like, um, what would you call it? Like sort of like um, 
not cracks in the ground, but like it was like separated like ground. It was yeah, almost like little um, alleyways of of uh, hills or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, it was quite know. tight little sections. Um, don't know how you ex- explain it, but um, um, then we go through water. We go into like little little uh, f- what was it? Little fences and stuff like that. And we had to carry this yeah this log. And then we'd go up a couple of hills and, yeah, it was quite – it was a bit of – it was a race as well against the other team. Mm. So if you lost, you had to go into the cold water. So cold water was a big fear for a lot of people on that, um, oh. which is – it's not nice being being cold, but it was just all part of it. And some got, some of the some of the contestants on there really hated it. And so they um, made that as a, as a, uh, a prize if you won. Um, you got to – watch the other team go and get cold in the water. But, yeah, it's one of those things that, um, yeah, it was a physical activity for me that I sort of felt like I should have got through that. But it's like I said, I'd already made my mind up that I was, I was going to pull out. <laughs> 